Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, The Honest Mechanic. If you guys have stumbled upon this channel, don't go anywhere. Uh, hopefully you guys can find some of this stuff informative. So for today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a carburetor cleaning on a C1Q carburetor, which is made by Zama. So what we're going to need today, we're going to need a, a rag, just some brake clean, possibly a razor blade, a small flat screwdriver, a number two Phillips, and of course your dirty carburetor. So I just want to go quickly over the reasons why you'd want to clean one of these carburetors and some of those symptoms would be let's say your engine is hard to start or it's possibly hunting meaning that the RPMs are going up or down without any throttle input. Another one could be that you got low power on either the high end or on the low end. So stick around, like I say, I'm going to go through step by step and this I'm not even going to edit this video, so please be a little bit uh, nice with me here. I've just got this makeshift tripod so that you guys can see what I can see. So for starters, what I want to do is I just want to take the carburetor real quick and I'm going to show you where you're going to find all of the numbers in order for you to get a possibly a carburetor kit if you need one. So right down here, we're just going to give it a quick spray. Of course, I'm wearing some gloves and some glasses. So if we look right down here, I'll use this as a pointer. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, wait for my camera to focus. So right in here, you're going to see your numbers, which is uh, C1Q. Well, my camera's taking a bit of time to focus here. And on the other side, you're going to see, by the way, the other side, the first side is stamped. And on this side, these numbers here, so this one here is an S131, and then the 127A. These are the numbers you're going to need to bring into your local parts shop to get a carburetor kit, which includes your diaphragms and your springs and all the other good stuff in there. So what I like to do is I like to start off by using the top here, removing the primer bulb. We're just going to crack these loose and just pull them off. Something I should tell you guys as well is you should probably not use anything like a carburetor cleaner or anything strong like a solvent. Brake clean on the outside is not so bad. You're, we're not going into the diaphragms very much. But what I like to use is an ultrasonic cleaner. If you don't have one, it's something similar that you would use at your jewelry store for your rings. Get them on Amazon, get them on eBay for good price with a little bit of soap and water comes out really nice so there you go so we're going to remove the primer ball and the housing and don't worry I'm going to go through the reinstallation setup and then right here we're going to remove your fuel diaphragm something else to note is on this particular one you, when you remove it you might not always see it but there's actually a gasket are on the side of this right here and this gasket needs to face the bottom here it needs to be facing this way right and what that does is it gives you your air gap for your needle and seat so this is your needle right in here and then this is going to be your little spring setup. So what this does is as your airflow coming through, every pulsation of the piston makes it flutter and it allows a little bit of fuel coming in like this. So the next step is we're going to re remove this screw. Carefully remove the 
needle. So right here, this spring, you don't want to lose this guy. This guy here does not come in the kits. So make sure you keep an eye on that guy. And then of course, removing your needle. So guys, something else that I don't like to do is I don't like to clean these other than using perhaps your rag here and just cleaning the end of it, the tip. Reason being is that the tip is actually rubberized. So when I throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner with some warm water, it tends to soften up that tip and then it tends to stick, causing it either to under fuel or over fuel. Now from here, we're going to slip the carburetor over. We're going to remove the bottom side. Again, we're going to have a spring inside of this. So we want to make sure that put a little bit of pressure, hold it down. So that we don't lose it. Now this cover here is actually kind of eccentric. So you can only put it in one way. You don't have to worry too much about that. There's your spring. You got your plastic cover. And here's your other diaphragm. And you remove this. So inside here you're gonna have your reeds. I call them reeds, but really basically just little one-way valves. So these two guys right over here. So there's your one-way valve here. And then there's one over here. And what these guys do is they open and close, allowing fuel flow only in one direction. And then of course, another gasket. I got lucky here, I didn't have to use a razor blade. Sometimes some of these gaskets are stuck to the carburetor body, so you would very carefully remove it without tearing it. Now, if you're lucky and you have a decent ultrasonic cleaner, you can reuse all of these parts. Like I say, you're only going to clean them with some detergent soap, warm water, nothing else, no solvents. Last but not least, what we're going to do is we're going to remove our screws for the high and low settings. Now, something to note on this carburetor, somebody's been in here before, is these two screws, these are fuel screws, they normally have a cover, kind of like this guy, only being that this one here doesn't have any stopper, so there would be two covers on either of these fuel screws, and they would have a stop so that you can only turn it about three quarters of a turn until they hit the embossment over here. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you know which one you're playing with. And right here, if you guys can see that, there's a low, there's an L for low, and an H for high. And what I do is I take a pen, and I'll do an L, and then H, so that I know what I'm going to do for turns. So going clockwise, turning it in to bottom it out. I'm going to start with the low. And the counter turns. You can either use I like to use this screwdriver because it's got a nice little dimple on the side. So half and about three quarters. So three quarters of a turn in. So I'm going to mark that down. And then we're going to remove it. And we're going to set this guy right where we put it down. Reason being, they're actually different sizes. Same thing for the high. Half, one, one and a half, and we'll go one and three quarters. Mark that down. And remove it. So 
set that down over here. There you have it. Now this one here, if we take a real close look, and my camera's having a real hard time focusing here. Let me see if I can help you guys out. There we go. There's actually a little bit of dirt inside of these ports here. So by cleaning it, that's going to help out a lot. You can see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's actually something as a either hair or I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's in there and it's not supposed to be. And then right inside here, there's actually a screen in here. We're not going to remove it, but just to give you an idea, there's actually again some dirt on that screen. So that's all stuff that's going to impact how good your carburetor is going to work and how efficient it's going to be. So that is how you disassemble a C1Q carburetor. Now don't be alarmed, there is a lot of parts in front of us here. But like I said, I'm going to throw these into my ultrasonic cleaner. So these are the three parts that are not going to make their way in there. That's going to be your two fuel screws and the seat, or sorry, the needle. But as for the rest here, all of these are going to make their way into a little container, into the ultrasonic cleaner. And on the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to reassemble all these parts. Thanks, and I hope you guys liked it. Hopefully you found it very informative, and if you did, please hit subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys soon.